music producers. It's Curtis King at CurtisKingBeats.com, and today we are going to talk about how do you promote a beat? A beat that you know is getting ready to sell like hotcakes, but there's just not enough eyes on it. Let's talk about it. Music producers, I can't believe that I have not created a video like this before, but it is time. Why not do it today? How to promote a beat, especially in 2019. I mean, this could have been done really any year within the last two or three years, but I have never made a video or sort of a guide to help you along the process. Now, keep in mind, everybody's process is going to be a little bit different, but what I would like to do is run you down the line of how I promote a beat that I know that I'm getting ready to put money behind on SoundClick. I'm getting ready to put some kind of advertisement dollars behind on Facebook. Let me go through the process of how I basically unveil this beat. It obviously starts first and foremost with the beat. Complete the beat first and foremost, right? A lot of producers get so happy and excited when they got a great loop going on and you see them with the phone doing that back and forth thing and making people dizzy on the Instagram like, hey, hey, you like this? It's $25 when I finish it. Come on, you ain't even done with the beat. Go finish the beat, map the thing out. You can go simulate the process and act like you just put it together later, but I suggest that you put the beat together. When you're feeling it and you got that feeling, good. What I want you to do now is start to finalize that beat, get the mixing, get the mastering, do your process, do all of that, make it sound really good. Once it's done, now I want you to start to fake it. When I say fake it, I want you to fake it like you just put together this fire loop. Why? Because as you start to unveil this beat within your promotion, you're going to always be a few steps ahead of the game. When somebody hears or watches your video and they're like, yo, that's fire. Yo, what is that beat going for? Have you ever noticed that happens? This happened to me a lot. So where I had a beat where on my Instagram, I showed a sample of uh, Super Mario on a, on a shell, right? I've told this story before. Super Mario's on a shell. Bro, you don't knock no more? Bro, is, nigga, is you wearing a romper? And I showed that as one clip. I was holding down the button on Instagram and then clicked it off. You wanna play the game while I'm doing this? Here. And then the next clip was me saying, hmm, I think I can do something with this. And then the next clip was me actually sampling it and chopping it up. The next clip was me actually putting the drums together. The next clip was then the whole beat all together. My DMs was going crazy. They was like, how much do you want for that beat? I want it before it even hits the website. That's good because that's building momentum. That is the pre-push before the push even actually starts. Bro, you better not ever come to a studio session with a romper again in your life. You crazy? What's wrong with you? Here we go. Where are we going? Uh, I'm not no better now. Now that the beat is complete, what I'm asking you to do, and you already probably got a hint of it, is break down this particular beat into micro content. You may get to a point where you can have a week long full of content. Let's say six posts, right? Because it's three and threes on Instagram or even YouTube. You could have it to where you break down this beat. Instead of having, I think that's one thing that producers, they're, not, they're afraid of, is breaking down one huge chunk of content into multiple pieces. Who said that you can only do one behind the beat video? Who made that rule? Break that today. You be the one that breaks it today because I sure in the hell would love to do that. I'm probably going to do that when my studio is built. This is the new studio setup. What I wanted to do is give you guys a quick tour. I mean, most of the stuff that you've already seen in past tours is still here. Just enough changes to justify doing an updated tour of the studio as promised. But man, as you can see, it took two long years to get back to this point. My studio's upstairs. But when my studio's built, I'm going to break that rule. But I suggest to you to do the same thing. Now, what I am basically suggesting is that in your beat, there are a melody. You could show you putting the melody together. You can show you fiddling around. You can show you going through all the different Omnisphere presets. And you can turn that into content. Man, putting together this beat. I kind of have an idea about it. And you can talk about it within the captions of your social media. Here's the whole, whole idea. The bigger picture is that you're bringing people into your world. You're making them care about a beat. Because if you just put a visual 
visualizer in front of them, they're just gonna take it at face value and move on with their life. But if you start to give them pieces of it, right? Maybe you bring in a guitar player. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Who is that? Oh, do you, okay, he plays a little, a little electric guitar. Oh, that's kind of crazy. See y'all laughing in the studio, see him messing up and then going back and then finally getting it. And then you saying, man, it'd be crazy if I can get a live drummer. And then you cut the video. That can be an Instagram clip. That can be a YouTube video series in which that can be part two or day two of this beat. And then the next day could be you bring in the drummer and you can still create more micro content. We're just talking about just the melody and the drums. You haven't got to any other aspect of that beat, the chorus, the outro, or whatever you wanna add to that. The whole idea that I'm trying to get to you when you wanna promote a beat, promote all aspects of it. Turn that into the chop shop. Chop that whole situation up, that process up, and act like you're putting the beat together day by day. They don't have to know that you're already done with the beat. Here's the thing that you should be doing in the meanwhile. While people are consuming that content, you start to put together the track outs, you start to put together the pricing for that beat, and you put that beat on your beat store hidden and just hide it for a second. And then you make a date that you are going to release it and all that micro content you've been putting up literally leads into that date. What you're doing now is starting to treat your beats as if you're releasing a single or an album. Yes, just like a rapper. When producers get into that mindset, you'll get the most out of it. Let me tell you where I got this mindset from. There was a independent label on the West Coast that I used to do production with and their CEO told me something that I didn't quite understand. I kind of understood what he was coming from, but I didn't understand it until a few years back. And this was like, I don't know, oh my God, 12 years when he told me this, 12 years ago. But he said, Curtis, if you take a cup and you put water into that cup, as soon as that cup is filled up, and it overflows, what do people do? They stop, right? Or they pour it out or they drink it or they gotta do something with it, it's done, right? And they gotta fill that cup again. He says, how much more water would you be able to get if you put that cup on top of a table, right? A really wide table and then you pour that water onto the um, in, into the cup. What's gonna happen is that water is gonna overflow over the cup then it's going to have to spread across the table, right? So you're getting more water out of the, the foundation. That is in turn what he was telling me is the ideology behind behind promoting whatever it is that you're doing. You gotta get as much, like one of my old managers used to say, you gotta get as much meat off of that bone as possible. And producers, we make so many beats sometimes that we're thinking like, oh, I ain't got time to do all that. That's too much for one beat. Well, here's the thing about it. When you're promoting that one beat and you're breaking it down into micro content, you're promoting your whole beat store. Because here's the thing that people are saying when they watch these videos. They say, man, I can't wait for the next one. This is dope. Producers are watching because they're like, yo, that's dope how he does his process. I wanna see more. The demographic or the main demographic of producers are what? Rappers. Who are your customers? Probably rappers, probably singers. Good. Now you're in front of somebody who can now expose you to their particular audience. Also, aside from that, rappers are watching your videos and saying, he takes a lot of careful timing and a lot of attention to detail with his craft. I like that. He or she, I like what they're doing. I actually want to invest off of the strength of me seeing these videos because I think they're so cool. The problem is that a lot of producers, and this is a lot of musicians and creatives, want that instant growth gratification that they get within their art to convey to business. And that's just not the way it's going to happen. The same way you got to get the most low end out of an 808, the same that you got to get the most snippety snap out of a snare is the same that you got to get the most out of your presentation and your promotion. Your promotion is more than just pushing out links. It's got to be more than that. Also too, you cannot be tone deaf as to what social media you should be on. I think that we all have in our mind that because everybody else around us has every social media, that's how we kill it. We have that be proficient in every social media. It's just not the truth. If you have a social media that comes easier to you, like if you're great with photography, some people just got the eye. Some people just don't. They have to develop the eye, right? Some people on YouTube are just personalities and they just, they can't help but be personalities. I'm one of them. YouTube works for me. It may not work for you, but you gotta find some place to get your message across, right? If editing videos is something that you don't find fun, find a platform like a Instagram that allows you to use smaller clips and it's actually valuable on that platform, right? Make those platforms work for you. When it comes to promoting your beats, you gotta get the most out of one thing at a time. That doesn't mean you stop making beats. That doesn't mean that you slow the process down. That means that you show people, look, I put a lot into this. There's a story behind everything that I am doing. When you see the story, when you like the person telling the story, you're more likely to want to buy from this person. And also you're more likely to become a tribe member or even a follower of their movement because you believe in what they got going. Shout outs to John Bellion. If it wasn't for his behind the music, behind the beat videos he made, I would never know about his music.
I found it on a general YouTube search. In this life, you will not be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. It's Curtis King, the leading voice of the online music producer and rapper community. Don't add me. Peace. Please subscribe to the channel below. Curtis King, CurtisKingBeats.com.